We greet all of you tonight, including those in the live stream. As we have gathered together to sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen. As Brother Judy reminded you, this is the 15th message on the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> He will come like a thief in the night. This is mentioned in the text that uh, Sister Emma read from 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 4. It is also mentioned in 2 Peter 3, 10. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Jesus himself says in Revelation 16, 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Amen. Amen. So this is uh, reaffirmed a number of places. There is a body of teaching extant today in the Christian community about this that is erroneous. I'm not going to spend time at this point Delineating, delineating its erroneous nature, but in this series of messages, I will deal directly with that heresy. Now, the coming of the Lord is <clears throat> referenced in a number of ways in the Scripture. One is a simple yet profound affirmation that he will come. He will come. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. There's a there's a a pillar around upon which you want to build your reasoning. Whatever you may think about the Bible, whatever you may think about Scripture, whatever quote doctrines you may embrace, make a prominent place for this. The Lord will come. Again, it's referred to as him coming the second time. As in Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ is once offered to bear the sin of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. The second time means on earth or before humanity or even before a segment of humanity. That's the second time. Now some theology has them appearing three times, I understand, but see, it's just, it's just false, that's all. Another is he's going to return. That's another view of Christ coming. Jesus mentioned this when he told a parable that was intended, it was the truth couched in this everyday language, so to speak. He said, the certain nobleman, the kingdom of God is like this, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Amen. Now we know from the uh, book of Daniel that he did ascend into heaven in a cloud. From earth's viewpoint, they saw him go up in a cloud. From heaven's viewpoint, they saw him coming with the clouds. And there says there was given to him a kingdom. He went back to heaven to receive the kingdom. He's not coming back to earth to receive the kingdom. He went to heaven to receive the kingdom, and he's going to return at an appointed time. To clarify that he has all along been managing a kingdom. Yes. Which time he will call men into account. And then it is also referred to as an appearing <coughs> Christ coming. Keep the commandment of the Lord, Paul wrote Timothy, without spot unrebukable until the appearing of Jesus, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the appearing, uh, not, not a secret type thing. Amen. 
the appearing. Amen. It's going to be seen. The revelation said every eye shall see him. It's an appearing. Again, in Titus 2.12, it speaks of uh, the grace of God teaching us how to deny ungodliness and worldly lust to live soberly, righteously, and godly in his present world, looking for that blessed hope and gl glorious appearing. There it is again. A glorious appearing is, appearing is, is an appearing that is marked by clear sight and revelation. It's not ambiguous at all. It's going to be a glorious. Nobody on earth is going to be aware of anything else but Christ's coming. Nothing else will come into mind because everything else is going to be gone at that time. <laughs> so that shows how there's a number of different ways this is stated in Scripture, each one of which is a, is a central type truth. I'm looking forward to the day of judgment when people that have not preached the second coming of Christ are have to give an account for that omission. It'd be nice if they give an account for it now so we could all understand where they're coming from. Because I'm telling you right now, anybody and everybody who doesn't preach that Jesus is coming again is not on Jesus' side, and it doesn't make any difference what they say. They are opponents, enemies, hostile. Jesus is waiting for his coming. The saints are waiting for his coming. Angels are standing by waiting for his coming, and the Father's going to send him when he comes, and there cannot be any ambiguity on this subject. And woe to the person who clouds it up for people or omits it or doesn't expound it properly. We call for the resignation of all such pastors permanently from the pulpit and from preaching to get out of the mainstream of Christianity and occupy the seat of the unlearned. That seems strong. That was intended to be strong. Such have no place. There's no place in the kingdom of God for a person who's supposed to be a leader to fail to tell people the truth about Christ's return. If the grace of God teaches us to look for it, well, we best be talking about it. So let's see a different, I want to show you what Jesus taught about him coming as a thief, what Paul taught about Jesus coming as a thief, what Peter taught about Jesus coming as a thief, and what Jesus himself said about him coming as a thief. That pretty well should uh, wrap the matter up. <clears throat> now, Matthew 24, 37 through 43, the Lord Jesus tells about how he's going to come and he mentions this thing about the thief. I'm going to read these texts because I want my mind to be thoroughly saturated with this as I speak. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That just happens what we're talking about here. As in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore... For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief, the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not. 
the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Isn't that interesting that he likened it to a man that was caught off guard by a thief? Yeah. See, for all the ungodly, Jesus will come as a thief. Yes. Not only unexpectedly, mm -hmm. but to take everything they've loved. Amen. Amen. Everything they've rested in. Everything they forfeited the knowledge of God to keep. Everything that kept them from Jesus Christ. Everything that occupied them in the place of being a follower of Christ. He's going to take it away. And they're going to stand naked. Absolutely naked and bereft of not even one thing that they love or that they want or that they know. Not even one thing. They're going to stand. The thief will have robbed them, robbed them of everything that was precious to them. And there they will stand before God without a single solitary possession. Coming as a thief in the night. He's going to break up the house. <laughs> going to break up the house of the ungodly and there's not a thing they're going to be able to do about it. And they know what's going on. Their house is going to be gone. But they think of it, brethren. There are people, everybody's in the process of a building a house. Jesus said, now I'll tell you what I'm going to like and whoever hears my word and keeps it, I'll tell you what he's like. He's like a wise man that built his house. Built his house on a rock. The winds came, the floods came, the rains came, and the house remained firm. But the foolish, the man who heard my word and didn't do it, is like a foolish man that built his house on the sand. Uh, he had to buy just as many materials as the man that built on a rock. The difference wasn't what was in the house. It's what the house was on. That's the house that's going to be broken up. And when you think about what people are building their lives on, some are building their lives on pleasure. Some are building their lives on business. Some are building their houses on fame. They're not building on what Jesus said. It's going to come as a thief in the night. Again, he spoke another saying in Luke 12, 33 through 40. He referred to himself as a, I mean, as a thief. Luke 12, 33, sell that ye have. <laughs> you you got to be smart enough to know what he means when he says that. If you don't, I just, then go learn what it means. Because it's a very difficult thing to explain. In fact, I don't know that you could really. It's not meant to be explained. It's meant to grab your attention, grab your heart, and grab your mind. Sell what you have. That is, sell what's expendable. Stop hanging on to what's going to pass away. Stop depending on the temporal. Stop seeking your pleasure in the temporal order. Sell what you have. Give alms. Provide yourselves bags that wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. We're no thief. <laughs> yes. We're no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. See, most people say where your heart is, there your treasure is. But whatever you value, yeah. that's where you'll focus your attention. Yeah. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. That's a twofold mandate. Let your loins be girded about. You also will learn it's with the truth. Let your thinking be directed by truth. Let your light be brightly burning. That's what I have done with flickering lamps. They have done with that. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. And when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and shall come forth and serve them. 
<laughs> what a thought. I mean, you want to digest that. Yes, That's going to be sufficient to repay any inconvenience yes. you went through to follow Jesus. Anything it costs you to follow Jesus. When Jesus goes around and starts washing our feet, yes. nobody's going to be thinking what it cost them to go to heaven. <laughs> he shall come in the, if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, that's it, they're serving. Red, they're ready for him. Blessed are his servants. And this know that if the good men of the house had not known what had known what hour with the thief, <laughs> there it comes again, the thief would come. He would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken up. Be ye therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh in an hour when you think not. Like a thief. Yes. All right, now, who was this? Who's this word for? I'm interested in that. Because Peter asked him after he said this, he said, Lord, speakest thou this parable to us or even to all? Who, who's this for? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise servant whom his Lord shall make ruler over his house to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Amen. Yep. Who's that for? The people that are so doing. Yes, amen. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good word, isn't it? So if you're busy in the work of the Lord abounding in every good work, as the scripture says, then this, this is Jesus' word to you. Amen. Be alert. Be alert. When I come, if I find you in this posture, you'll be able to sit down, and I'll come forth and serve you. Oh, there's not going to be an eternal arrangement, you understand. This is going to kick off eternity, as I understand it. But it'll sure be worth it all, Amen. I'll tell you. All right, that's Jesus teaching on the thief. It's enough. It's not, it's not thorough, but it's thorough enough to get your attention. Uh -huh, yes. Now let's deal with what, what Paul said about this matter. of Jesus coming as a thief, now that's what we're talking about. Jesus coming as a thief. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 7, he touches on this subject, speaking about the Lord's return. The Thessalonians, only having been believers for three weeks or so, people sometimes forget this, and our Brother Gene is quite frequently brings this matter up because he knows what remarkable progress these, these people had made. There's some people we know been 30, 40 years, not anywhere near where the Thessalonians were. They thought that they hadn't heard extensive teaching on the subject, but there'd been some things they'd heard and they'd concluded that whoever died were, was going to miss out. Yeah. You say, well, why would they? Well, let's, they were young in the Lord and they hadn't been exposed and evidently this wasn't a popular teaching at the time and they just didn't understand. So Paul's going to write them, well, the times and the seasons, brethren, you have... You, you have no need that I write unto you. That is to say th that this is going to happen is not the issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If this is going to happen, that's not. That's right. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief of the night. So after three weeks, they knew that. Yeah. They got that. Yes. That Jesus is coming as a thief of the night. You know that perfectly well. Mm -hmm. It's a scheduled event, but the schedule hasn't been published. But it is on the docket. It's not yeah. going to be changed. Yeah. It's an appointed time. You know that perfectly well now. For when they shall say, peace and safety. We got things under control now. Oh. We've negotiated peace over there in the east now. We got the national debt all paid off. Things are really, job rates are up. We, we, peace and safety. Things are going along pretty well. When they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them. I was talking about thief as a thief in the night. Sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. As when the travail starts, the baby's on the way. 
however, your, whatever arrangements you have made for the birth, whether it's a, a home with a midwife or whatever, you got to hop to it because there's not long. That's how Jesus is going to come again. But ye brethren, and said they'll not escape, but ye brethren are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. And I'm talking about Jesus coming as a thief, brethren. It's not to you. He's not coming to you like a thief. Amen. You're out of the darkness. That's people. He's coming as a thief to people living in the dark. That's right. yeah. That aren't thinking about Christ. They aren't thinking about God. They aren't thinking about preparation. They got other things on their mind. They got other businesses occupying their, their time. Those are the people who's going to come as a thief. You're all children of light. Gee, thieves always come in the night. They don't come in the day. Yeah, right. And the children of the day, we are not of the light, night nor of darkness. We've got, to say, we've got to tell God, listen, people, we're not of the night. Yeah. Don't be talking to us like we're living in the night. Amen. We're not living in the night. We're children of the day. Tell us about things that illuminate. Tell us about things that can be seen, things that can be comprehended. Let's not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunk and are drunken in the night. And those, those are the ones Jesus is going to come as a thief. He's going to catch them completely unawares. Even though he sent preachers to chronicle this event, even though he raised up apostles to announce this event, even though there was apostolic doctrine, clear doctrine, that said Jesus coming back, get ready, get ready, get ready, they chose to live in the darkness and they weren't ready. That comes a thief in the night. But only to those that are in the night and in darkness. To others, it'll be clear, a clear and welcome Revelation. We say, oh, yeah, thank you, Lord, for returning. Amen. Amen. For me, you came at the right time. I've been looking for this day. Yes. It's going to be even better than you imagine. Yes. Now, you mentioned about Thief of the Night, particularly in First Thessalonians 5, 1 and 2, that it can't be predicted even though men, at <laughs> other times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So we, for us to say, well, we pretty well calculated out about when it's going to be. One good brother said to me, said it to some of you too, he said, we don't know the day or the hour, but we kind of know like the year. big snare. When he says the day nor the hour, that means any day and any hour, yes, not amen. just the next day and the next hour. Amen. Amen. See, the thief of the night, you can't predict it, yes. but you've got to live in complete awareness of it. Amen. See, flesh can't do this. Uh -huh. Flesh has got to have a schedule. Flesh says, if you expect me to wait, you got to tell me when it's going to be. God says, no. I'm not going to tell you when it's going to be. I'm going to tell you it is going to be, and you've got to live in a state of readiness. Yes, you can't afford not to be ready. Amen. There are some people, you know, they have trouble getting up. The groggy in the morning, yet you got to overcome that. Because he may come in the first or second watch. Till I don't know if I can, you know, well, you can. Yes. The Lord says, live in a constant awareness. Go to sleep thinking about it. Wake up thinking about it. And live thinking about it. Because that really is the only way you can get yourself ready. Yes. Got to be thinking about it. And he told us there's going to be a time of people will think peace and safety. 
you say, what about wars and rumors of wars? That will precede. But it's not going to be right at the, right up to the time. It's going to look like everything is going along. I can't get any better than this. Yeah. Look how good we have it. I mean, the Lord must love us. He's not going to. Well, when they're saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction. Yeah. And it will overtake them. First Thessalonians 5, 4. It will overtake them as a thief. Thief drives around the house, cases the house out, maybe looks through the windows, maybe feigns a visit as a salesman or something, gets his, what he wants in the house all figured out. Then he overtakes them in the night. That's what Satan does, see? Whatever, whatever illicit desires you have they may be lawful according to the state they may be lawful but Satan knows those and he'll do his level best to feed you there to make sure if you got this weakness he sets something up there that will appeal to it the only way you can neutralize it put on the whole armor of God and live for the Lord don't let the day overtake you as a thief in the night. Don't let Christ's coming be the most terrible thing that ever happened in your life. When you lose everything and you receive nothing, don't let it be that, see? He's telling us enough about it now to make preparations. Those who are sleeping are of the night, and they are subject to the thief. That's what that text that we just read says. It's not be drawn, not, not, it's not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. They that sleep in the night, for they that sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So it's, don't choose to live as though this wasn't true. Amen. Do we know some people? Some of them were related to them even. They're living just as though Jesus is never going to come. A lot of them are church people. They're church people. They go to church regularly. They're nice people. But they're living as though Jesus will not come. Well, Paul taught enough about it that you don't want to be in that category. Now, Peter, he... He brings up this thing about the thief, uh, thief also. In 2 Peter 3, 8 through 18. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day with the Lord is one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And with an economy like that, you can't do much predicting. <laughs> you can't do any predicting if that's the God doesn't operate by a calendar. Times is the calendar's in his hands. In fact, he no one's published God's calendar. God has a calendar he operates by. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, us us word, uh, not us humans, us believers. Wrong stuff into us word. <laughs> now, brother, the truth of the matter is God's been long suffering with all of us. Amen. He's put up with all of it with all of us. He's put up with more than enough. Yes, amen. Amen. Long suffered to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, all out there, no all in here. That is, he wants his people to be ready. Amen. Amen. In his long suffering, he's, he's uh, exhorting them so they will be ready when he comes. But the day of the Lord, in spite of this fact that I just stated, in spite of this, the day of the Lord will come as a thief, as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's when he comes as a thief. That's right. I say when he comes as a thief. 
The heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works of their end shall be burned up. That's when he comes as a thief. All right. All the people that teach that there's a rapture, you've got to explain this text to us, and we're going to be very critical about your explanation. Yes. You're going to have to prove your point by something beside the writings of men. Amen. We're not going to let you use some human logic. This is, a, this is revealed. When he comes as a thief in the night, the natural order's gone. That's it. Seeing that these things will be dissolved, how's that for a word? What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation God is? Well, now you see, God won't answer this question for you. You've got to answer the question. You've got to answer the question. In view of the fact that all that is around you is going to go and is scheduled to be terminated, how should you live? Should you live as though this stuff is all going to stay? Should you? You've got to answer that question. In all holy conversation, conversation's manner of life, your life is like a extended conversation in which a point's being made and things are being made known. Looking for and hasting. I like that word. That means we're running to meet the day. <laughs> we're the, the race. We're we're in a race. Not a walking race, it's a running race. Hasty means run toward that day. Be consumed by the expectation of that day. Anticipate the coming of the Lord and do everything that's necessary to prepare for it. And if you're behind in something, just make up for lost ground. Do it. Looking for and hasting to the coming of the day of God. I was a, see, it's a day when Jesus is going to be revealed. But it's called the day of God because that's the day God's going to be vindicated and overcome when he's been judged. He's going to be justified in all his sayings. It's going to be the day of God, God's day. It's going to be Christ's day too. Where, what, this day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wind, rid of the righteousness. So we're not going to enter into a heavenless and earthless eternity. Yes. Be a new heavens and a new earth that cannot pass away. Amen. Now, this is my own understanding. My understanding that this present heaven and earth exists now underneath the scaffolding of the present heavens and earth. And so that when it appears, it will find it's been, it's been here all along, but it's been obscured by the scene. I, I think I've mentioned this once before, but I saw in the 70s a skyscraper being built in New York. And it took quite a while, I made several trips to New York with a considerable length of time but between each one where this thing was being built. And it just looked like a wooden structure. It was a scaffolding, see? But underneath that scaffolding, <laughs> there came a day when they took the scaffolding down. And when they did, there was this glass building that was there being built all along, but nobody could see it. That's what's going to happen here. The yeah. present heavens and earth yeah. are like a covering up of the kingdom and the new heavens and new earth, and the glorified Christ and the holy angels and God himself and the spirits of just men made perfect and a lot of other things that can't be seen. When Jesus comes as a thief in the night, all that's all that obscures will be passed away. 
That's how you gotta, you gotta kinda say it that way. I understand that for persons you can debate how this is and all that sort of thing, but you got it's got the bottom line has to be things as they are now aren't gonna be. And you got to settle for that. How this, God hasn't spelled out in meticulous detail everything involved here. Just don't get tied to what's going to pass away. That's the, that's the point. Look for and hasten to the coming of the day of God. And and we're we're looking forward to it. I can only speak for myself here. But I've had enough of this old world. I've, I've had enough. I'm not giving up. Don't get me wrong, I'm not giving up. But I have, I have experienced a number of things I'm glad you only experienced them once. At least that's all I've experienced them so far. And I'm ready for this. I, I can testify that the world can't sustain you no matter what it offers you. Amen. Can't do it. Now Paul reasons upon this, he just told us. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, look me, you're anticipating it, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. (laughs) In peace, without spot and blameless. And the count of the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. That is until until Jesus comes again and until the dissolution of the natural order, God's, God's at work. See, he's, he's perfecting the saints. He's, he's getting them ready for the time. Yes, amen. It comes that the long suffering of God is salvation. So this, this between now and then, this is when salvation amen. is. He is being wrought out and experienced. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, and as in all his epistles. He always, always talked about this. Speaking of them and of these that speaking in them of these things in which some things hard to be understood, or it's hard to be understood. He doesn't mean Peter did what saying it was hard for him to understand it. which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction, not the destruction of the scriptures, but the people who mess the scripture will be destroyed. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so Peter, he, he knew quite a bit about this time too. Uh-huh. Just when he comes as a thief. Uh-huh. And he admonishes them from several points of view. Uh-huh. And to consider when you see the time is it looks as though he's tarrying, see? But think of that as him, God being long suffering. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. In other words, you may not be ready yet. And if you aren't, God does want you ready. Mm-hmm. So you apply yourself. Now you apply, you apply yourself. Throw yourself into this work zealously because God, God will underwrite your efforts now because he's long suffered. He's not willing that any should perish. So anyone that extends himself to get ready, they will be given the grace to get ready Amen. so that when he appears, it will be to their salvation, not to their loss. Then he tells them, now grow. <laughs> grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ because you can't fail to grow and be ready for this day. So Peter talked about it. And finally... Jesus talked about it again in the Revelation, in the Revelation. He brings this matter up again, Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, 
lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What do you mean? Well, you, you kind of have to be familiar with the language of Scripture. God gives the garments of salvation to everyone that comes into Christ. Amen. What they call the robe of righteousness. Keep those garments on. Amen. Keep them on now. Don't be found naked. Don't take what Jesus gave you when you come into the kingdom, clothing you with righteousness, giving you access to God and beautifying you with salvation. Don't don't take those clothes off. Yes, yep. Say, try and get you to take them off. Mm -hmm. Try and convince you you can do it and still be ready. You can recoup. You can, you're smart. You're, you're smart. Satan will tell you, you're smart. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to make up for lost ground quick, you know, that you enjoy yourself. You shouldn't live a dull life. Your religion shouldn't be so restrictive. You can do some other stuff. You just don't have to serve God only all the time. I mean, let's, let's be real about this. Everyone should have a good hobby and so forth and so forth. I'm coming like a thief, Jesus says. I'm not going to say, I'm coming, ready or not. See, that's what we used to play hide and seek, you know. They'd call it, here I come, ready or not. Jesus isn't going to do that. What he's going to do when he comes, he's going to shout the dead from the graves. <laughs> The last trump. Oh, brethren, you don't want to be found naked Amen. and the whole assembled universe see your shame. Amen. See? Not to mention God and Christ, the holy angels. Everybody's going to be seen for what they are then. What they really, what they were all along here, will be seen for that when Jesus comes. When he comes as a thief, so you see how the Holy Spirit talked about this. Jesus talked about it when he walked among men. He talked about it coming like a thief. Paul in his doctrine taught about Jesus coming as a thief. Peter and his doctrine thought about talked about Jesus coming as a thief, and Jesus didn't close up the book of Revelation when the mill of Revelation mill ceased to grind there on the Isle of Patmos. He didn't close up the book till he said, I'm coming like a thief. Yes, amen. And I'm talking to the churches. This letter was written to the churches. Revelation was written to the churches. Amen. Now, somebody's going to have to explain why it's hardly read at all, why a lot of Christians are afraid to read it. When it was written to the churches, that's who it was written to. You want to be ready. Amen. Brother Robert has our word of exhortation tonight.